Hey guys, let's do question six now. Okay, question six looks at your trig graphs, right? Specifically, it says in the diagram, the graphs of f of x, I've drawn it here in yellow, right? Which equals sine x minus one. So it's a shifted sine graph. And g of x, which equals cos 2x, right? Are drawn for um, the interval negative 90 degrees to 360 degrees. Graph g and x intersected a, Perfect. And then it says B, which is 360 and negative 1. Those are its coordinates, is a point on F. Okay. Written in that, use a bit of color. Let's now jump into the questions. Now it says, write down the range of F. Now, when you see the word range, you should automatically think, ah, oh, we're looking at Y. So we're looking at what we have there for y. Now, if it was just a normal sine graph, so if it was just f of x equals sine x, then our y would be an element of inclusive negative 1 to 1, right? But this is a shifted graph, right? And we see that the shift is negative 1, right? The shift is negative 1, right? And we know that the shift is in the y. So for this f of x graph, right? y is going to be an element of negative 2 and 0. Sorry, both of those are hard brackets because the, it's included, okay? So it's important to identify what is a normal sine graph this range and what have we done to the sine graph, right? We've shifted it, therefore our range is shifted, okay? So let me just write that for you. We'd say y is an element of negative 2 and 0, okay? So that's important. Okay, let's now move on to 6.2. It says write down the values of x in the interval, negative 90 to 360, so the interval that we have here, for which graph f is decreasing. Okay, so we can see here that it decreases, right? So it increases, 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 and then from 90 to 270, it decreases. Now, I would say, right, at 90, it's neither increasing or decreasing. It's a turning point. And at 270, it's neither increasing nor decreasing. It's a turning point. So it's between 90 and 270. So this is not one that you can do a bunch of math to figure it out. It is simply, right, simply looking at the graph that they're giving you. Often students think, oh, the graph's not going to help me at all. In these instances, the graph helps you a lot, okay? So don't just um, completely ignore the graph. Use it as a tool. They give you information for you to use, okay? So we would say um, x is decreasing, right, between 90 and, oh, that's an ugly little semicolon I did there, 90 and 270. Okay. Now, let's go to 6.3. 6.3 is the biggest question of this question, so it's going to require a little bit of work, but that's okay. It says P and Q are points on graphs G and F, respectively, such that PQ is parallel to the x-axis. So, basically, we don't know where, right? Let me, before I um, right, draw it in, let me finish the question. It says, if PQ lies between A and B, so it's between, somewhere between here, right? Somewhere between these two points. Um, determine the value of X for which PQ is a maximum. Now, when you see the word maximum or minimum, what should you be thinking? You should be thinking, ah, derivative, of course, right? If you're not thinking that, start thinking that because that is what you should be thinking. Okay. So it's basically, I'm just going to draw it in here. This, this is not necessarily the point that it is a maximum, but just to show you what we're looking at. So it's this, this line that is parallel, right, to the y-axis. That's between G and F, right? So we're going to say G minus F, right? We're talking about the distance between G and F, right? And we want that to be a maximum, okay? So first of all, we're just going to minus F from G, okay? So we're going to say, well, PQ is just going to be g of x minus f of x, okay? So we have cos 2x minus sine x minus 1. Now, it's important to get your signs right here because I almost got my signs wrong there, as you just saw. But just work slowly and make sure that you know what's going on, okay? Now, you could be saying, well, okay, that's all good and well, but what do we do with that? Well, we want to get to a point, right, where it's all in terms of one trig function, okay? One trig function. So I would say let's try get this cos, right, into sine, right? And let's see how we can do that. Well, 
we can do here, right? There's cos 2 alpha, and then there's three different ways we can write it out. I'm going to use the middle one because it gives me sine, right? And if I then have sine in my calculation, then sine is the only trig function I have in my equation, which then makes it a little bit easier to manipulate. So I'm going to say 1 minus 2 sine squared x minus sine x plus 1. Okay. Let's now simplify it. Okay. Negative 2 sine squared x minus sine x plus 2. Okay. Fantastic. Now, you could be saying, okay, Marx, that's all good and well, but like, how do we now differentiate sine? So let's do this, because now we want to differentiate, right? Because now we want to get our maximum. Let's do this. Let's use our k method. So we're going to say let k equal sine x, right? Therefore, pq is negative 2k squared minus k plus 2. Now you could be thinking, oh, that's easy peasy. It is, right? Because now all we have to do is we get our derivative and then, well, we get our derivative and then we can just solve quickly, right? So it's not too difficult now. So I'm going to get the derivative of PQ with regard to K. This is going to become negative 4K minus 1. Set that equal to 0, right? Because we, when we're getting a maximum or minimum, we equal to 0, okay? So then this is going to become k equals negative 1 over 4. Okay, so what that means is sine x is equal to negative 1 over 4. Okay, so it's important to be able to leverage both your trig knowledge but also your algebraic knowledge, right, in order to do these derivatives. Okay, so now we've got um, sine equals this negative quarter. Now, let's remember, we're going to use cast, right? Right, it's very important. And where sine is negative is going to be the third and the fourth quadrant. So what we do is we get our reference angle. Remember, our reference angle is a positive acute angle, and then we apply it to the quadrant that is relevant, right? So we're going to say inverse function of sine, 1 over 4, and then I'm going to get my reference angle is 14.48 degrees, okay? But we're not done yet, right? We have to get it in the third and fourth quadrant. So x is going to equal 180 plus 14.48, or x is going to equal 360 minus 14.48, okay? Because that's the third quadrant, and that's the fourth quadrant. Okay, so let's just write our final answer here. Okay, so x is going to equal 194.48 degrees, or x is going to equal, let me just do that in my calculator. Oh, goodness, I'm just making up my own sum there. Okay, it's going to equal 345.52. Okay, and those actually make sense now, because if you look at where we're saying, right, we know that it had to be, it had to be kind of around about 180 to 360 because it said it was between A and B. So if we were getting something that was vastly different or vastly below 180, you should be thinking, oh, that's a bit sketchy. But here, if you look at our results, it kind of makes sense, right? It's basically saying there's one over here is a maximum and over here is a maximum, somewhere over there, which kind of makes sense when you look at it. Okay, so it's important to remember your algebraic skill when you're doing these trick questions. Okay, great question this. I hope that was helpful. Let's move on to question seven.